and what's in my glass or what's in your glass i love it it is really an opportunity for the millennials to show that we can get this done we can get this christian thing done it's not boring it's not corny it's not whack you ain't dragging it all of that kind of stuff it is really something that you know they're doing that's really showing a wonderful wonderful and shedding a wonderful light on the millennials and their christian walk so make sure you join them make sure you join them okay so while we're talking about a closer walk christian talk show youtube channel make sure you are pressing that that uh subscribe button make sure you give this a thumbs up like it and definitely comment let us know what's going on in your mind let us know what you know what you're thinking you know these topics are really really hard hitting and god is amazing because his timing is always right on point and i'm really seeing as god is giving these topics what he's really doing with his people so make sure you share okay okay so i'm gonna go over a couple of um segments that we have gone over some prayer topics that we've gone over and we let's go from the bottom up let's talk about where we were a couple of weeks ago we prayed for mm, being a witness for christ we prayed asking god to allow god to turn our weaknesses into strength we prayed obedience over sacrifice a changed life humility a better understanding of god's will ministering to others a divine release from your circumstance accepting and dealing with change protection of our home listen if we are really touching on some really powerful topics and i love god because he does what he does he is always on time if we're thinking about it if we're not thinking about it he's there when we want to let go he's holding on and he is amazing he is amazing so you know what let us know if you're in the room we got to check in from our girl vivian hey vivian vivian is on it's due time with pastor staff every wednesday morning she is our correspondent for our socially conscious segment for wow wednesday so make sure you check her out she's been hanging out with us after you know she gives her segment so she's been in you know a part of the round table we've really been enjoying her so make sure you check her out again she is the other half of shantice and v yeah we know it's vivian but on you know her uh new show with all due respect she's known as v so hey v hey vivian glad to have you on with us we got to check in from our friend mrs peggy hey peggy how are you thank you so much for joining us we got to check in from our girl Ketty. hey Ketty. Ketty is a loyal listener so we're so grateful for having her on so make sure you call your people make sure you text your people let you you know let them know that we're praying tonight we're not gonna be on long and we're not gonna be on here late either so we're gonna hit it we're gonna quit it make sure that you are you know a part of this prayer topic tonight we are praying for a renewed mind mm a renewed mind that is powerful you know one of the things as, as i was preparing this announcement to go out god was really just kind of talking to me and you know god has me talking to the christian people more than the unchristian the non-christian people of course he wants to pull new people in of course he wants new people who don't know god who don't understand that he is the way 
but he really has me challenging his the people who call themselves his and I'm, I'm noticing a lot of stuff you know that god is really bringing to my awareness and one of the things with with his people we're, we're having a hard time with changing the way we think and one of the things that you know he has really sounded the alarm on is we're not going to be able to do much when our, our our minds are not renewed very little we're going to be able to do it, we, we're not going to be able to function in this world if we don't have a renewed mind we can get baptized we can claim jesus as our personal savior we can say praise the lord hallelujah we can go to church but if we are actually operating the way the average individual is operating if we don't want to be spoken to if we don't want anyone to kind of guide us whether it's gentle guidance or whether it's a little you know with some force it doesn't matter which way but you know we're we're real you know touchy about being able to be spoken to if when we see things that god is putting before us as as uh something that we don't want to do or we would rather do it our way or you know asking you know well why can't i do this this way when god is really pointing us in another direction we're not going to be able to function as proper christians we're going to we're going to continue to call ourselves christian people but we're not going to be able to really be considered christ-like by god if we don't renew our mind and I, I i'm the first to tell you that it's 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 this is something that you really you're really going to have to have a made-up mind about you are really going to have to be prepared for god to do what he needs to do in front of you around you for you in you about you in order to really get that mind renewed because nothing else functions properly unless our mind is renewed and when we are when we're, we're at a point where we become so comfortable that change comes and now we're irritable when change comes we're not ready or prepared we're not it's not gonna work it is not going to work i promise you and you're gonna lose a lot more time in life than you're going to gain and and the way it looks this world the way this world is moving we don't have time to lose we have time to do exactly what god is giving us to do because we don't know how much time we have here and until that happens we're going to be a mess and i i can't personally i can't afford to be a mess i cannot afford to be a mess in the sight of god i cannot afford to be a mess in my christian walk i cannot afford to be a mess in this world because this world is a mess already so god has put us here to be peculiar god has put us here to be change you know people who, who offer change people who can be looked at as as changed individuals we can't look like everybody else but yet god is going to receive what we do so you know i'm here tonight to encourage you to come on put on that helmet not just the helmet of salvation not just the helmet that's gonna help you get into the kingdom because guess what you can put that helmet on, but if nothing is happening after that helmet is put on, man, it's not going to work. All right. So you know how Pastor Steph does. I'm going to give you some scriptures that uh, help us go into the right direction of transforming and renewing our mind. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12, 2. I, one of my favorite, several favorite, by the way, but one of my favorite scriptures is just that. 
be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And I don't want to say it's hard because that's what everybody means to. I'm trying, you know, I'm doing my best, but here's the thing that I love about God. And we talk about this quite often. God does not give us anything before we can truly digest it and make the change. What kind of God would we serve if he gives us something to do that we can't do? That it's going to take us five years to get done. He gives it to us today, uh, September 3rd you know, 2020, but we're not doing anything about it until January 3rd, 2025, because that's when we are ready. That's when we are prepared. No, when God gives it to us, gives it to us tonight, tonight, today, means that it's ready to go into action. And you can ask much more of God. Because he gives you according to where you are. He gives you according to what you can do. He does not give you something and then all of a sudden he's expecting you to make it happen. You know, I'm trying, I'm really working at this thing. No, just do it. Just do it. It's just like Nike says, just do it. That's what God says. Hey, too much is given, much is required. God says, I winked at you in your time of ignorance. So if you're ignoring Pastor Steph right now, if you are uh, turning your back on the word that you're getting right now, if you want to do it your way right now after hearing the right way to get it done, then guess what? That's you ignoring God. You're not ignoring Pastor Steph. That's you ignoring God. So I don't know what to tell you. You just gonna have to deal with your ignoring God. I got a couple of shout outs. Hey, we got a shout out. Ah, uh, Pastor KL. Hey, Pastor KL. Thanks for joining us. Pastor KL is also a part of the Due Time crew on his Due Time with Pastor Steph. You can hear Pastor KL on Mondays, Tuesdays, some Thursdays, and always Fridays, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. So make sure you check it out. Okay, let's see what else the Bible has to tell us. The word of God has to say about the renewing of our mind. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Romans 12, 1. Just the, 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 the uh, scripture the verse right above being transformed by the renewal of your mind. You have to present yourself. You have to present your body. And I think a lot of times people forget that the mind is inclusive. When you talk about the body needs to be presented as a living sacrifice. You presenting what your stomach, your feet, your hands, but you're not presenting your mind. You have to present that mind. So if you're having, you know, just that inkling of a thought that says, you know what, I can, I can really use, I can really use just a little nudge in the proper direction of renewing my mind. I'm on the right track, but I got to nail this thing. I got to get it right because let me help you understand something. The enemy and his little minions, they are watching and they see your every weakness. Yeah, they're watching. You know, God, God is, is, is the good force here. But don't forget that the enemy is also out here watching. No, he can't be everywhere at the same time. But trust me when I tell you, the Bible reminds us, hey, 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 the enemy is lurking. The devil is lurking so that he can see what is going on with you? Because he is seeking whom he can destroy. That's his goal. So if you want to be destroyed, then hang out, hang out on the side of, ah, I don't really want to be, you know, I don't want to deal with this change. Yeah, because that's exactly what he is waiting for. He's waiting for that small, 
that small break. He's waiting from that small weakness. He's waiting for that little crack or crevice to climb right in. And you know what that crack or crevice is? That's your nasty attitude. That crack or crevice is your hesitance. That crack or crevice is, is you trying to figure out which way do I go today? No, come on, get on the bandwagon. Put that prayer request in the chat room. We're getting ready to pray real soon. We're not going to be long today. And I'm telling you, fight, stay in the fight. And this Sunday night prayer is an opportunity for each of us to bring this to God. Don't ever look at the topic and go, this ain't me. It forces you to survey yourself. It forces you to say, you know what? If, if I'm a part of this announcement, then that means that I got something to bring to God. And you know what? If it's 3%, I'm going to bring that 3%. Because that 3% could actually outweigh that 97% of what I think I got right. Woo. Come on now. Let's get this job going. Let's get this prayer going. Oh, shout out to Mariah. Hey, Mariah. Thank you so much for joining us. We're praying tonight about the renewal of our mind. A renewal of our mind. Whatever little small percentage needs renewing, tonight we're going to hand it to God. We're going to hand it all to God. We're going to hand God 100%. So that we are not in trouble later for that 1% that we didn't give to God. That 1% could take us down. So we're going to hold hands and hold hearts together so that we can make sure we walk into the kingdom of God. This kingdom here on earth and then the kingdom of heaven when Jesus comes back and God then comes back and claims this earth. That's the part we want to be included in. So come on. Put the prayer request in. Let's get another um, scripture. I like this one. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Any little thing that is unperfect, we need to bring to God. Any little thing. So that's why, you know, I don't want, I, I don't want you to sit back and think, well, my mind is good. So, you know, I, I didn't change. I didn't made that renewal. I'm good to go. After I sat down and sent out the, um, the announcement, I sat and I, I just talked to God and I prayed and I said, this is for me as well. Thank you so much for bringing this topic to the table because regardless of how right I may think I am no matter how many times I come to you I want to make sure that I have done my job I want to make sure that I have done what I need to do to renew my mind is my mind where it's supposed to be because if it's one ounce off that's too much that's too much that's too much for me because the enemy could catch that little piece right there. And I'm not handing over anything to the enemy. I'm not keeping anything from you because I think I got it together and give it to the enemy unknowingly. So let's put that prayer request in there. Asking God to deal with whatever piece it is that he needs to claim. Did you partially give over something? Because not all the time do we give it over wholeheartedly. When we, we, we don't want to take any advice, when we don't want to be corrected, when we don't want to hear from God during our off times. And I know that's how we are. That's how we are as people. You know, I'm not going to tell you it's okay. No, I'm going to tell you if you ever feel that way, if you ever get something from someone and you're like, I don't feel like hearing that. That's exactly when you need to go to the Lord. That's exactly when you need to turn over your thoughts to God. God, I'm going to hand you that. I don't want somebody to say anything to me right now. You know, are you at your job? And when the boss says something to you, you already warring. 
even if you smiling at him or her and you're saying, okay, is it your coworker who's saying something to you? And you're like, you know what? How is he going to tell me to do something? And he don't even do that. Does it necessarily make what he or she is saying incorrect? Is it wrong? Because they're also doing something wrong. You know that we go through that at times. You know, I didn't say nothing to me and they can't even write their own behind. He just snotty nose kid coming along and they saying something to me. Listen, we don't know who God is going to use to help us. Sometimes children say something to think about things and it makes you think. It's like, yo, okay, okay, okay. You know what? I got to get that together. That's something that God could be using to flag us. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. Thank you, Father. If my co-worker has to say something to me, if the church, people in the church got to say something to me, if the people on the street, if one of my neighbors has to say something. You know, I had a neighbor one time, a long time ago. I had a leak of oil. And my neighbor, I parked across the street in front of his house. And he said to me, he was like, you know, when... Your, you know, you have an oil leak and, you know, that means it's doing such and such a damage to your car. And he mentioned something about it going on the side or in the street. <clears throat> and I don't, I didn't know God the way I know God now. So that, that was like, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to put two and two together or whatever. I took it for what he said, but he mentioned something about like tracking it. Like wherever, if you step in it, you track it. And later on, I realized, and I want to say, God brought it to my realization. I don't even want to take credit for it. But I realized that he was actually saying to me that when he, when he steps, when I walk and I leave the oil from the bottom of my shoe in front of his house, and when I park my car out front of his house and then I move my car and it's all over the place, then he's actually tracking it into his home. And I was like, wow. And I was like, well, you know what? He could have said that, but you know what? You don't know what you could say to people because everybody's so temperamental and they're going to cuss you out and they walk off with it at the slightest thing. I, I noticed people just get all twisted about. No matter how you say it, you can say it gently. He was very gentle when he said it. And, you know, I was like, wow, God, you know, you really, that's what he really meant. It was like a, like this epiphany and this revelation. And I was like, you know what? He was really telling me he's tracking it onto his carpet in his house. And that meant that where the other person's house next to him, they tracking it into their house. And, you know, this, when, this is when carpet was the thing to have. And... It, you know, it. you have to give God thanks the way you get information. You know, it's something as small as that. Now, this might be like, well, what does that mean, Pastor Steph? Why are you talking about that? That No, what I'm trying to say is you can get pieces of information from any source. God can use any, anything and anyone to help you understand what it is that's actually happening. And that's, you know what that comes from? That comes from the renewal of your mind. Understanding that God could use anything or anyone or any example he needs to use to help better your situation, to help you love someone else. So here's the challenge in that. Do I go get my oil changed just because I need the oil change or, or there's a problem in my car? Well, absolutely. Because if I got an oil leak, something is wrong. But do I now incorporate that thought into, wow, not only is there a problem with my car, but when I leave the oil leaking in the street, and someone walks in the street and steps in that oil, they're tripping it and they're tracking it into their home. I don't want to be responsible for taking it into somebody else's house. 
Does someone else, does your neighbor and your neighbor's property mean that much to you? It's also connected to when you're a neighbor and your house is the junkiest house and everybody else trying to keep their house neat. Do you realize that when they appraise your home and the homes right in the immediate vicinity of that home and your home, that everywhere counts? And when you don't clean up your nasty yard or when you leave garbage or when you don't sweep, that all becomes a part of the block's problem? Are we just cleaning up for us? Or is God helping us with a renewed mind that says, I am my brother's keeper. That every little bit I do counts. Every little bit I do makes a difference. Yeah. That everything I can contribute to. So, you know, you may see this as being disconnected, but I'm telling you, the renewal of your mind is quite broad because once you allow God to deal with you and deal with your thinking, you begin to live as a child of God very easily. You know, when you have a renewed way of thinking, now you're thinking on biblical levels. The Bible, one of the first things the Bible tells us is love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that's exactly what I just got finished describing. So I'm going to give you another, you know, we're going to find another scripture. And uh, we're going to see what the Lord tells us about renewing our mind. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the father, but is from the world. 1 John 2, 16, it's like, well, what does that have to do with it? Oh yeah, because it says, do not be conformed to this world. So when we hear this piece in this verse that says, it's not from the father, but it's from the world. Instantaneously, you're supposed to be saying, well, wait a minute, I need to make that change. I need to be go on the side of the father. I don't need to be on the side of the world because the Bible also tells us that when we have the mind of the world, that that's the carnal side of, of life. And when we are against God, and God has definitely told us that I am not in sync with the world, that once we are with the world, we are automatically against God. So take all of these things and put them together. Okay? I'm getting ready to read our... Our prayer request, if you hear something that makes you, uh, makes you think about having a renewed mind, make sure, make sure you include it in your prayer request and I'll read it. Okay. Right. I feel underappreciated. So I pray that I'm more appreciated for all the efforts I put forward. Pray that I seek God to renew my mind and find his way to live and lead my family. Amen. You know, we have this, 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 we have an issue with being underappreciated. A lot of us do. A lot of us, you know, a lot of times we're at work and we feel like we're not paid for our, uh, what we do. I do all this work and I'm being paid $20,000 when I'm actually working and being, I should be paid $45,000. But I'm going to tell you something. God is not going to allow you, us, to give our lives our energy, our mind, our will, our way to people and things, and we shun and push him aside. That, that is one of the biggest things that God has shown me over the years. 
You think, Stephanie, you're going to be able to give this world everything. And yet you give me this much, but you want this much from the world. Now, for those of you who are on blog talk and you can't actually see me, I got a little cup that we're giving God. But I've got a, a whole bowl that I'm giving to the world. And God is letting us know, I'm the source of everything that you have. I am the source of everything you get. I am the source of everything you come for. You can't go to those people for things, but yet that's where you give. So I want to remind each and every one of us who feel underappreciated, survey what you give to God versus what you give to the world, what you give to your job, what you give to your friends, what you give to your partners, what you give to your children. And then, and then go back and ask God for forgiveness. Because see, once you survey this thing, you're going to automatically see that something is, is a little bigger than the other side. And the, the scale is off balance. So renew your mind. Renew your mind into understanding that God owns it all. Oh, yeah. God owns it all. And he deserves my all. Am I giving him my all? All right. So come on. I want you to make sure that you are on the right path of renewing your mind. That's what we're talking about today. And if you need your mind to renew, I don't care if it's one percent that you think. Because see, what we think is always different than what God thinks. Make sure you put it in the prayer request, okay? Because I'm going to read it. We're going to pray about this. We're going to take this to the Lord today. Because this is big. This is bigger than we even think, okay? Praying for a renewed mind by God to be stronger. My strength to break bad habits that are hindering me from the change. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those prayer requests. Yes. We can't change if there's no renewal of the mind. Amen. Amen. Oh, we got to check in from our friend, Majesty. Hey, Majesty. Tonight we're praying for a renewal of the mind. Okay. A renewed mind. We need it. Don't think you don't. We all need it. All right. We got Kadeem Scott in the house. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. We pray that you are blessed. Make sure you put your prayer request. All right. Make sure you put your prayer request in the chat room. Woo. They coming in. They coming in. All right, so we can definitely take these things before the Lord. I pray that God continues to renew my mind and soften my heart. I pray over my triggers that God would renew my mind to the point that the triggers don't affect me any longer. I pray over my vision that God would help me to see things with church grown eyes and that I wouldn't waste any more time seeing things with sensitivity and having to work my way out of my own feelings. I pray for renewed mind for my family, that they would all be changed in the way they think about Christianity, the way they think about church, and that they would think more highly about their personal relationship with Christ and the Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the prayer request. Thank you so much. We have mm, rebellious times. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we rebel in ways that we don't even realize. When we war against God, that's that huffing, that's that puffing. See, I'm going to go back old school. How many of you remember if your parent or an adult was talking to you and you kind of turned away, turned away real quick, they like, pop, they caught you. If you rolled your eyes, you sucked your teeth, pop, they caught you. And you thought you were being slick. You thought that nobody was catching that. 
but in actuality they were god is that's what god is going on with us when we see our when we when we when god sees us kind of turning away real quick sucking our teeth or rolling our eyes pow he's smacking us and see we are not savvy enough to catch the times when we're getting smacked we're not catching it and all the times we could be blessed we missing a whole lot of blessings because we're being rebellious because just like in this prayer request there's that sensitivity that comes there's that times when you don't want nobody talking to you you don't want nobody say anything to you make sure you pray about that renewal of the mind oh we got a prayer we got a, a check-in from our, our guy Serge. hey sir check it out thank you so much for joining us saying hello all right, praying and asking God to help me clear my mind with anything that is not of him. Asking God to renew my mind with positive thoughts instead of negative thoughts so I can stay focused on whatever assignment he gives me to do and let me be able to do it in decency and in order. Amen. Thank you, God, for not giving up on me and thanking him for keeping me sane. Woo, amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer request. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to come and pray for a renewed mind, to change my mindset, and for you to help me in the process to remove the way I think. Having you to help remove all of the negative thoughts I have of myself. Amen. I pray that you help me see myself the way you see me, Heavenly Father. I also pray that I have a different view of seeing the world where I know my purpose is to help the world so they can be your friend, Father, and that you always reach out to us. Amen. I ask for the renewal of the world's mind and how the world has a mindset of thinking negatively. Just asking to help them, Father, to um, to be better people and not let themselves treat one another with, oh, to help them treat one another with kindness and the younger generation as to how to have morals. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer request. Amen. Mm. Oh, she said, I guess my mother got me a few times. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer request. I pray the Father renews my mind to focus on heavenly things and not worldly things. Praying that God renews the mind of my family members and friends to be curious about him. The truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer request praying for the ones who's lost in this world who doesn't know which way they want to go praying that God renews their minds to seek him wholly and wholeheartedly thank you thank you for that prayer request all right we have a prayer request I would like I would like the placement in a school that God has for me and prayer for the for my family members struggling with choices and financial hardships. And we're going to add that we're praying for a renewal of the mind. Thank you for that prayer request, because let me tell you something. When people have asked me in the past, Pastor Steph, please pray that I have a new job. Please pray that, you know, I, I do this and I do that. I have to go to God and ask God to help their thinking because a lot of times we don't realize that our thinking is one of the reasons why God has not moved us that we need to shift the way we're doing things and unless we shift the way we're doing things and and the way we think God's not going to give us improvement God is not going to increase what we have so my prayer is that you know, the, the, the mind would be clear that you put God first and make sure God is first so that God can bless everything behind you. The Bible tells us that, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Thank you so much. Ooh, we're getting some good prayer requests as always. Praying and asking God to give me a renewed mind. Praying and asking God that He changes my outlook on things, that I see it, 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 that I see it right. Praying and asking God that He continues to love me and keeps me, keeps correcting me. Praying and asking God that all the negative things can be forgotten and handled, so I can be a better Christian. Asking God that my mind is clear, so I can have a good understanding and clear, and a clear way to Him. 
asking God that he continues to contain the devil so I can be able to be the person God wants me to be. Amen. Thank you for that prayer request. Listen, we've been warned and I've talked about it earlier about the scripture that says that the enemy, that's his job. He's seeking who he can devour. And yes, there are times when God is going to contain the enemy. And there will be other times God's just going to let the enemy be him. But it's up to us to make sure that it's contained. That we are in a transformed and renewed state. And we are in a transformed and renewed level of our mind and our heart. So that we can see that God wants the best for us. And we move on that. Okay? Amen. Thank you for that prayer request. God, I thank you for another day and another opportunity to come to you. I ask that you help me, Lord, to seek you first in everything and not suppress the leading of your Holy Spirit. Help me to renew my mind and heart like yours, not leaning on my own understanding, but holding up what you deem important. Help me to truly put away all things thoughts and people that are not of you and are distractions to keep me stagnant. I lean more into you so that you can complete the work you started in me. Amen. 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 Help me, Lord, to always stay humble and to accept the correction you send me. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those prayer requests. Thank you. Praying that Jesus continues to help me grant him Complete access to my mind so that he can renew it. Asking God to continue to help me so that my faith is built to an authentic and genuine level. Thanking God for the convictions and always pointing out where and how I'm falling short with my thoughts. Praying that I do better with my living according to the Holy Spirit so that my mind stays on things of God and not my flesh. Amen. Amen. Praying for my friends, family, and everyone God has me serving through ministry. Asking God to renew their minds so that they can think and make decisions on a spiritual level. Amen. Thank you for those prayer requests. Let me say something to you for those who are praying for your family and friends. You're the key. You are the key. God has given you to your family and your friends, so you can be the example setters. You can be the trend setters, so that you can lead the way. If you do not, if you do not get these things under control, you will be useless to your family and friends, and it makes no sense for you to pray for them. Because you are going to be praying for them to surpass you. God has given you to be the one to help to change that life. So when you see that your family and friends need help, then you get yourself together and you be the example that they need to be. You cannot be in a fallen state in front of your people. Now that does not mean that you can't cry, that you can't be human, but some of the stuff that we're doing, we are the hindrance to our people. So make sure you get your stuff in order so that when God allows you to see the fallen state of your family and friends, that you can really be of assistance to them. Okay. Amen. Amen. Oh, we got a Daquan. Hey, Daquan. Thank you for enjoying, you know, enjoying us as much to stay here and just say, Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Yes. We have to be the example. Absolutely. All right. Thanking God for choosing me to break the generational curse in my family. Thanking God for exposing me to what he has saved me from and why he wants to renew my mind. Thanking him for trusting me with that information. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the prayer request. Praying that I continue to learn how to hand over the unforgiveness that I'm still holding on to. Praying for a renewed mind so that I can have the divine compassion for others God needs me to have. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer request. Lifting my church family up to continue to allow God to renew our minds 
to stay focused on him and his way and not our own thoughts and flesh and keep us from accepting correction. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for those prayer requests as I'm about to go before the Lord. I pray that you put your prayer request. If something is touching your heart, touching your mind, as your mind is renewing and being renewed, make sure you put your prayer request into the chat room, okay? Mm. Dear Heavenly Father God, God of all mankind, God of creation, God who is responsible for each and every one of us being here tonight. Thank you. Giving you the glory and the honor that you are due to keeping us in our right frame of mind. We give you thanks that you have not allowed the enemy to get access to our mind. He can't control our mind. And we're grateful that you won't control our mind. Because at that point, we'd be robots. And God, I come to you tonight on behalf of your people with a very heavy heart. That we are responsible for our own destruction. That we can't even blame the enemy for the decisions we make. That it's our own nasty flesh and spirit that is keeping us from being elevated. That is our own nasty spirit, our own nasty flesh that's keeping us from improving that it's our own nasty flesh that is keeping us from being a better child of God than we are. That nobody is to blame for this but us. And I don't think God will quite understanding how dangerous this is. As I come before you tonight, dear Heavenly Father, I pray that everyone in this room right now that their hearts would be softened. That they realize that you are merciful. And if you weren't as gracious as you are, we would be smashed right now. Because it's not you're not taking you're not taking this as lightly as as they think you are
Thank you. We are the reason why people are not being drawn to you. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Here we are praying for family and friends and we're the hindrance. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We're looking across the table, pointing fingers, and we are not any better than those we're pointing fingers at. That we're so busy looking across the table that we don't even realize how bad we are. And I stand in the gap tonight, God, to ask you for forgiveness. I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. I pray to Heavenly Father that there is an awakening tonight. That your people hear how serious this is. That there are people that are standing at the door. But we're standing in the way. I stand between you and your people, God, as the bridge, going and standing before you and your son. And as your son is standing before you for me and your people, praying that they understand the severity of their disrespect, of their disregard, of their disobedience, that you keep repeating yourself, that this is nothing new that you're bringing to the table, mm. and that you have allowed your people to just slide by, that they are barely getting by. And that's not what you have for us. I pray to Heavenly Father that their minds will be open, that they would just stop asking and that they would start doing, that there is no excuse. None of us have any excuse. That you've been begging, you've been knocking at the door of our hearts, knocking at the door of our minds that whether we have not accepted you as of today, that we have still been trying to do things on our own, that you have been most gracious, you have been most generous, that they should have been left with nothing, groveling, 
eating off the ground, but you and your words still, 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 you said, I will never leave you nor forsake us, even in our wicked state, even in our sinful state, even in our state of rejection. You still have the rain fall on the just as well as the unjust. And your door is closing. Oh. Thank you. I thank you for them. And I lift them up, God. That even if your people are are not as instrumental as they are supposed to be, that they would find their way to you. That you would send whatever it is that they need so that they can say yes to your will and yes to your way because it's there. The door is opening. The door is open. But your word says tonight that they think that that door is going to be open for long and they're going to start watching all of their blessings start to dwindle. Lord, I pray that they hear my word tonight as I don't know them personally. But you have positioned me to stand in the gap for them. That I don't know their circumstances, but you've positioned me to stand in the gap for them. That I know that you've been reaching out to me, to them, that I know that you've been talking to them, that I know that they have no excuse except that their nasty flesh and spirit is saying no because they want to live, but living hasn't even begun. That they've just been breathing and even that very breath has been loaned by you doesn't belong to them but you could have cut that pipeline off a long time ago but tonight is the night that they can officially hear that you're talking to them to everyone in this room that has not accepted Christ as your personal savior God says I'm closing the door you can try me if you want, but watch me move because everything belongs to me. That nothing is yours just because it's been in your possession does not, be, does not mean it belongs to you. It's mine. And I've allowed you to possess it. But trust me when I tell you, you won't see it and have it for long. That you can come to me with it all, or you can come to me empty. Oh, 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 he's about to drain the well dry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 all the things that you've had, all the things that you've had, oh my God, all the things that you've had, oh, you will only remember that you had, oh my God, oh my God. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. Mm. For everyone who claims him, who's telling people that you're baptized, who's telling people that you're a Christian, you're standing in the way. 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 Somehow, some shape, some form, some fashion. You're standing in the way. And God is holding this against you. God is holding this against you. Because you're supposed to be the light. You're supposed to be the salt of the earth. You are officially standing in the way. Mm. Mm. And you are not where you think you are. You're not on as the easy street you think you are. God is still being very gracious to you as well. And you need to be just as dry as the others. But God says, I'm giving you a small amount of time to get it together. Because you will not claim me, but not show exactly who I am. You will not let your nasty flesh and spirit stand in my way. And keep men from me opposed to drawing all men unto me. It's you that's pre preventing the larger movement. It's you that's standing in the way. It's you and your nasty way of thinking. There needs to be a transformation, a renewal of the mind. And he is starting with the house first. He's starting with his house first. He's starting with those who are claiming to be his first that you are warring against him and he is not appreciative that he has said stop and you have continued he has said go and you have stood still it's not being taken lightly Oh, 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 oh. Listen, hear, and move tonight because you're either on one side of the fence or you're on the other you're not in between see where you think you, you you're making little mistakes and you think that you know uh, i'm only human and you think that you know god understands he says no 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 he says i'm i'm, I'm looking at you and i'm reading it for what it is Oh, 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 oh. He says, there's no in between. He said, I spit you out a long time ago. You are on one side of the fence or the other. You're either doing it right or you're doing it wrong. And if you're doing it wrong, you belong to the enemy. I don't care whether you've been in the water or not. Oh. Oh. Get it together. As I stand in the middle. Oh, as I stand in the middle for you, whoever's in this room. Now, when I say whoever's in this room, I mean, even if you stumble across this, this, this prayer after Sunday night, April 7th. This word is for you because it's not you stumbling. It's you being directed to hear this message, to get it right now. There's no more time left. Everything, the clock is ticking. 
survey what you're doing and get that renewal of the mind open up your mind that you give god your mind right now because he is not going to control your mind that's not his job that's not what he put us here for he didn't put us to be robots he will not take over our mind that mind has to be given openly it has to be given wholeheartedly it has to be given to him he is not going to take it he is not a bully and he will not coerce you he will not force you this whole movement is on you right now and they said there are no more excuses. Oh, 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 no more. Oh, no more excuses. None, none. The, the rocks are going to fall right now. The price will be paid right now for your reluctance, for your resistance, for your disobedience, for you saying no that he's been extremely generous to every single one of us. Watch your life right now. Could it really be better than it is? We're not talking about, oh, I can get a little more money. No, 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 no. Should it be better? Are you watching things go and you can't control it? That's because it's being removed from you. Are you watching something that should have been been uh, improved a long time ago? That's 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 what God is preventing because you don't deserve it. Oh, I stand in the gap tonight as God uses me. Not because I'm perfect. Because I've been chosen because I've submitted myself to him to be used, which means I have to get rid of all the gook and the junk. I can't make no excuses, but not because I'm perfect. Because God has made sure I can't boast about doing it right. But I stand before you and before God on your behalf for you to speak for God. Being willing to be used by God for his purpose tonight, right now. And I thank you, thank you God for choosing me because that means that everything I give you, you, oh, you're receiving everything I give you because it's true, because it's honest. You're receiving it and you're honoring it. And it's, it's clear and pure enough for you to use. Not because I'm perfect. Not because I don't have more to give. Not because as tomorrow comes, you should spare my life. I won't have more to give. But that's because whatever I have, I'm giving to you. Without, without anything being held back. Without holding a little piece of it. Because I'm yours. I'm yours and I'm here to be a living example. And your words say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Not because I'm perfect. Because there's nothing that I will withhold from you. Oh, there's nothing that I won't give to you. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to me. My children don't belong to me. My grandchild. Doesn't belong to me. My home doesn't belong to me. My breath doesn't belong to me. My eyes don't belong to me. My mind doesn't belong to me. My hands and my feet, my body does not belong to me. It is a living sacrifice that I give to you. It can bring up every day. And I give it to you wholeheartedly. 
without reservation for you to correct it with me, God. And because of that, you can use me. And because of that, I can be used as an example, not because I'm perfect, not because I don't get it wrong, not because my intentions are good, but I don't stumble, but because I don't have a problem with getting up because I don't have a problem with being ashamed of what I've done before you and giving it to you, God. And that anyone who watches Stephanie can say she does not care about being wrong and she'll take the correction no matter how hard it hurts, no matter how many times, no matter what it is. I don't have a hard time standing up for what is right. I have no favorites but what is favorable and honorable and what you mandate out of us what your word says is where i stand i don't care who doesn't want to but i do because i promised you that you would never have to tell me to do anything a second time and today i stand in the middle for your people and I stand in the middle for your people that I know and I stand in the middle for your people that I don't know and I stand in the middle for your people who are struggling and I stand in the middle for your people who are resisting you who want to do it their own way to let them know that I've been there I've made the decision I didn't want to do it God's way and I wanted to do it Stephanie's way and it doesn't work not a little bit and it doesn't work a lot, but it doesn't work because if it's not God's way, it's the wrong way. And I don't have a choice but to do it your way if I want to make it into the kingdom. And I don't have any other choice but to do it your way if I want to tell you and show you that I'm taking this walk. And my word, seriously, your word says, let my yeas be yeas and my nays be nays. And I stand before you, God, and I stand in the middle, God, for your people. And I don't have a problem doing so, dear Heavenly Father. And I feel what you feel. And I'm angry at what you're angry about. And it bothers me what bothers you. And your enemies are my enemies. And I make that declaration tonight again, God, that I Oh, Lord God, without reservation, God, and I will do exactly what you think to do, God. I promise you that nothing, nothing, nothing will take me off your path. I don't care how much the enemy pushes. I don't care how much my nasty flesh and spirit will rise. And I want to do it my way because it's much more comfortable. And I want to do it my way because it feels good. And I want to do it my way because I just got the opportunity and the choice to be able to do so. It is not mine. There is nothing that belongs to me. And I'm standing in the gap today, God, to show your people and to remind your people or to introduce and inform your people that nothing they have belongs to them, that it all belongs to you. So therefore, we have to give it back to you, not the money that we work to earn, because if it weren't for you, we wouldn't even be on that job. We wouldn't have the breath that we had to get up in the morning to take that shower. We wouldn't have that water. We wouldn't have that home. We wouldn't have that transportation. We would not have that job. We would not have the right frame of mind to operate. No matter how well we do the job or how bad we do the job, it all belongs to you. 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 And when we're trying to do things, God, and we see that it ain't working, when we're trying to do things, God, and we see we just got to keep doing more and more and more to get it done. That's a sign that we need to leave it alone. And I stand in the gap tonight, God, to help your people understand that there's no problem in letting go. 
There's no problem in letting go. I don't care if it's five minutes before the hour. There is no problem with turning around and letting it go. Because if it's not right, if we find ourselves doing things, God, that that, that, that make no sense. If we got to work so hard at something that it ain't for us. That we can't continue to work until you say no. That is not your way of doing things. There is nothing biblical. There is nothing scriptural that gives us that guidance. That we work until you literally say no. Because I was there. Because you brought me out of that. I don't have to stop when you say no. But I'm supposed to listen to your spirit. That I'm supposed to watch what's going on. And God, for everyone that is in this room, whether it's now as I speak or later, that if it ain't working, give it to God. Let it go and give it to God. And it may mean that you got to let it go completely and let God start it off from scratch because that's what he will, that's what he will do if that's what he wants. But you don't want to hold on to something that God does not want. And it may not even mean that God does not want it completely, but you might be operating against God in his way. Oh, thank you, Father, for using me. Thank you, Father, for speaking to me. Thank you, God, for choosing me. Thank you, God, I deem it a privilege. I deem it an honor and a blessing for you to talk to me tonight. I deem it an honor and a blessing for me to stand in the gap for your people. I deem it an honor and a blessing that you give me the clarity over things that it, it's just so clean to other people, but it's not right. It's just not what you want. And people are warring against that. Oh, thank you, Father, for showing Stephanie, because that's the only way I could stand in this position right now. And now I lift your people up to you, dear Heavenly Father. I don't care how small it is in their life. I don't care how big it is in their life. God, I ask you that there would be a renewal of the mind right now, that every single person at the sound of my voice, dear God, would just say, you know what, God, take my mind, take my mind, take my mind. Take my mind. I'm giving it to you. And as I give it, I ask you to take it. Because now, once I give it to you, I can think clearly. I can leave room for you to work inside of me. So that when I read your word, when I hear your word, when I see you moving, I'll know it's you. Take the nastiness that I'm giving you, God. Take the twisted and convoluted that I'm giving you, God. Because as long as it doesn't belong to you, Lord, it, it is twisted. It's convoluted. It's, it's, it's nasty. No matter how great it looks. No matter how great it feels. Now how much I may think it's working for my good. It's not because Lord, I just don't want the water from the rock. That's not good enough for me. I want that pure water for everyone who rejected even being in the room tonight. The heavenly father, you have already let me know you will deal with that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because you keep saying that these are no longer invitations. This is a call that I have on every life that this is not, it's no longer an invitation to come to church. It's no longer an invitation to be in the prayer room. It's not an invitation any longer. I'm calling your name. I'm calling your name. When you say no, when you think you're too busy, when you're too tired, when you rather sleep, when you think you need to study, when you think you need to watch TV, when you think you need to do this or you didn't need to do that, or I got to take a shower, whatever it is that keeps you from being in the room, that's you saying no. And I thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you've given me that clarity. And I understand that I ain't got no reason. I ain't got no room to say no. Thank you, Father. 
thank you for helping me understand who you are and thanking you for using me to help people hear what it is you've got. And when they can't see the writing on the wall, God, you send me. And I pray that you use me to speak the words. To have the understanding. That people will not just hear and walk away. And Lord, that's why you are telling me that's why the gentleness is gone. Everybody want to be spoken to in this soft, small voice. And God says, I've been talking to you like that all, of, all along and you ain't paying no attention. Now it's time to change the strategy. There's still small voices long gone. Because there's still small voice you're not listening to. I'm telling you to pay attention. And God, tonight I stand in the gap for you. To do whatever it is you would have me to do. And I want to thank you for paying the bills. Something that a lot of us take for granted. We think these cell phones and these uh, internet packages and internet access and tablets and iPads and however we getting on this print line. Regardless of where we are. We think that it's happening because we, we went to work and we got a check and we paid the bill. But I want to thank you for paying the bill. Because if it weren't for you, it wouldn't matter. I want to thank you for Facebook. I want to thank you for Instagram. I want to thank you, God, for YouTube. I want to thank you for Blog Talk. I want to thank you for iHeartRadio. I want to thank you for Apple iTunes and Apple Podcasts, God. I want to thank you for Audible.com. Any way you have this prayer streaming, dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for it. Where people use it for trash and use it to listen to garbage, God, you have us coming across the airwaves, dear Heavenly Father. I want to thank you. Thank you for sounding the alarm tonight. For those of us who have completely rejected you and for those of us who are, are, are claiming you, but we're still rejecting. At the end of the day, you see it as rejection. And we are not getting what we are really in store for. All the good that you have for us Mm. we can't even get access to we think reading our bible or sitting up in church every week or that that's good enough no we have to understand that we're gonna get it from you any shape form or fashion and we just gotta be ready if you sh if you pull in our collar you snatching us by the collar directly or if you're using someone else or something else to get it done. If it's somebody on our job or if it's somebody in the street. If you can use a donkey to speak, you can use anything. You said if we don't cry out, God, the rocks will cry out for us. For every time we need to be talking about you, but we opt to close our mouths because we got an excuse. God, you said that's all right. Stay quiet because the rocks going to do your job. Hmm. For those of us who want a true renewal of the mind, who is not going to continue to talk about it, but who is going to be about it, who is going to do exactly what you want us to do, God, I'm standing in the gap for. I'm not standing in the gap for the naysayers. I'm not standing in the gap for people who are just going to hear and walk away in your way. That's not who I'm standing in the gap for. I'm standing in the gap for people who need a bridge from the bad to the good, from the weak to the strong, from the right to the wrong. I need, I need to stand in the gap for everybody who was on the wrong side, who had it right at one point, who have slowly found themselves on the wrong because they've been, they've been come, they've become disenchanted with church and you have been, uh, 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 you've paid the price for them being disenchanted with church from all this so-called church hurt that it doesn't matter what else hurts us in life. We keep going back. If somebody hurt us that we love, we go back. 
We go back into another relationship. If the job hurt us and the people on the job mistreated us and the managers and the bosses mistreated us, we go back. But when it comes to something that happens in the church, now God pays the price. No, no, we had it and then we walked away from it. But here you are tonight making the appeal, warning us that the bridge <laughs> is here tonight, but the pathway will close. That the open hose that's flowing free water, we had nothing, we did nothing to get it. But your son prayed the price for us to have this opportunity tonight that is closing. The time is now. That anything, anything, and anybody short of saying and doing exactly what you say will pay the price. That's why I'm here tonight. Mm. For everyone who's been waffling and they've been wanting to come to church and the invitation keeps coming. God is reminding you today. That's not an invitation to you, my brother, my sister. That's me telling you the door is closing. I'm about to close my door. Go and read the story of the 10 virgins, five wise and five unwise and see what happens to them. That is exactly what's happening right now. We thank you, Father, for sounding the alarm. We give you the glory and the honor. So rightly do your name tonight, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for sounding the alarm. If you are within the sound of my voice, you need to be saying, thank you, God, for sounding the alarm. Put in the chat, thank you, God, for sounding the alarm. I hear you and I hear you now. That your word is coming across loud and clear. Thank you. I don't mind being that peculiar individual. I know I may look weird to everybody, but I don't mind. Because I'll be on your side. God, I'll stop. Because you've told me to. I've been listening for uh, 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 the red alarming uh, uh, sounds to go off, the sirens. And I've been trying to work my way through this thing. But no, you've said stop. You've said give it to me. And I've done it my way. But tonight, God, I thank you for sounding the alarm. There is nothing in this alarm that has... And I don't know about it. If I've been waffling and I can't figure out what's going on, tonight is the night that I hear you loud and clear. And I say thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Mm. Mm. Whoa. I think this is our 71st prayer. And I have never had that experience before. Never. And I, I, I want to thank God for doing what he did for not just you, but for me. Not just for me, but for you. It's serious. It's quite serious. And I give God the glory and the honor tonight with every breath that I have. If you have been invited, quote unquote, if someone has been coming to you and telling you, come to church, come to church, come to church, get yourself a Bible believing church. Make sure that everything they give you and instruct you to do is biblical. Do not go with tradition. Do not go with um, uh, what's normal, do not go with what's popular, go with what the word of God says. The word of God is not hidden to anybody, not to 
anybody. If you can read, you can understand. If you cannot understand, God has sent you someone already to help you understand. God is not a God of confusion. He is not going to leave you perplexed. He's not going to leave you all twisted and feeling around for everything. He is not going to have you wondering and trying to figure it out. He is going to send you what you need. I promise you. So if you have been hearing from someone, if you've been speaking to someone, if you've been calling someone, if someone is on your mind who goes to church and who is in a Bible-believing church, I'm not even talking about just go to church with anybody, but make sure from the moment the word is given in that church that everything is parallel to that Bible. The moment it is, isn't it means you should not be there and it just may mean you may have to go to a couple of places but i promise you that if you are listening to me tonight god has already sent you somewhere i promise you because he didn't let you hear the word tonight for now for you to be going and fluttering around somewhere the word has already been given trust me when i tell you he wouldn't let me tell you something. I God dealt with me tonight in, in the presence of all of you. I've never had that experience before. Not like that. Not like that. By the time I get up to speak, by the time I'm on the air, whether it's in the morning on its due time, whether it's at you know, or in this prayer room or any place else, I already know what I'm gonna say. And God is giving me as I go along. He has never ever stopped me to receive publicly. Before I speak, never has that happened. So whatever, if you got to go play this back, do it. But I, I promise you, you need to move right now. You need to move. Make no mistake about it. Don't waste any more time. Make it tonight. Make that decision tonight and stick to it. Make that decision tonight and stick to it. Ugh. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to invite you to listen to us tomorrow morning. God spares on his due time with Pastor Steph every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time where we discuss matters of the heart, mind, and spirit. Make sure you hang out with us. Make sure you press that subscribe button. So anytime, anytime we are about to go on um, to have prayer, um, to have one of our segments on, you get the notification. You get the notification that Pastor Steph is coming up or with all due respect, it's coming up or we've posted a new video or, you know, it's prayer time, whatever it is. Make sure you give this link to someone. Make sure you send it to someone. Make sure they are blessed the same way you were blessed tonight. God didn't give you the blessing to hold on to it. I thank you so much for hanging out with me. It's been a little longer tonight, but I, I it's been well worth it. It's been well worth it because God was speaking powerfully tonight, power, more powerful than he's ever spoken before. And I implore you to get on your knees and go to the Lord and ask God to help fix you. Help fix you. Remember, give him that nasty mind. Give him those nasty thoughts. Thank you to everybody who has joined me tonight and we pray, we pray together and I stand in the gap for you so that God can be in control of your life. Give God your life so that he can make the proper changes in it. So you're not bumbling and stumbling and making the wrong moves. We don't have time. There's no more time. The time is now. I love you.